Welcome wonderful people, I am the Loose Critic, and today I am giving you my loose impressions of Cult of the Lamb, created by a massive monster and published by Devolver. Devolver does know how to pick them. They've made a couple other neat games that also involve cutesy animals and often cartoonish agore. Needless to say, they found their art style and they're sticking with it. I've played about 7 hours so far, let's take a look at the settings. Nothing too exciting in the game menu, you can turn off the tutorials. You are able to change your difficulty at any point once you start a game session. Graphics, you can unlock your frame rate, otherwise it's at 60 or 30. The graphic presets, ultra custom. So far I haven't had any issues on ultra, the game's 2D sprite based for the most part, so it's pretty easy on the GPU. Normal graphics settings, it does have some nice accessibility settings, you can disable your screen shake. You can reduce camera motion if you get a lot of camera sickness. You can increase or decrease the tech scale. All good things. Classic audio and some control rebindings. I've had a couple issues here where my accept key has gotten unbound when I restart the title. It's happened a couple of times now. That's pretty annoying, but an easy fix, especially if you have a gamepad. The game does say to use a gamepad over mouse and keyboard if you can, but that seems to be mostly an excuse because keyboard controls are a little rough. Let's get into it. This is your cult home base. You see I have a bunch of cute little animals that I can yell at and make them work faster and love me more. Because it is easier to make people love you through fear than actually putting in the effort. Got a little bit of a farming simulator. So far, it does seem like you have to manually pick all of these up yourself, which is a little annoying, but you can put seeds in here and then people will come by and they will plant for you. One of my bugs that I've encountered on this playthrough is this little guy. You see he's glowing white and he has two arrows. That usually means that you can promote them to the next level in your cult. However, when I talk to him, I don't have the option to do that. And that is a little annoying. So he's kind of stuck at the level he's at, but he's the only one that's happened to so far. Yeah, you can send people out on missions to gather materials. Over here you get devotion, and once this bar at the top fills up all the way, you this is where- oh, divine inspiration. Devotion is another thing. <laughs> they use all sorts of the, the different cult terminologies and stuff, and it's scattered throughout, and I get them mixed up pretty easily, but it doesn't really affect anything. Yeah, there's a, a big tree. I'm about seven hours in so far and I'm already at cult level three and I just need to level this up three more times to reach the highest cult level at four. There's a lot of different trees that you can go through here. The biggest thing I found so far was cheaper rituals which made your rituals cost 50% less, which is huge. What are rituals you might ask? If you go into your little temple over here. You have sermons, crown, upgrades, and rituals. Rituals are actions you can take to make your followers happy or just provide alternative benefits. Let's see, I have one here that increases my devotion generation for three days. Let's go ahead and do that and show you that. All your members come in here, they don their culty hoods. The sound effects are really great. And I really like the quote unquote voice acting. It's very cutesy, and there's enough of it that it makes sense when it's performed. I already performed a sermon today, so I can't show you that, but I can show you another ritual. Let's go ahead and do a bonfire. This is one of the first ones you get. Like the chanting and stuff, it sounds really nice. One of the things you have to balance is your followers faith up here in the top left these are little upgrade tables where you can put materials down to have your followers come over and upgrade them they're essentially smithing tables you cannot do these yourself that is all them over here you can build little buildings to upgrade the area one of the next things I'm looking to make is this upgraded refinery, which actually I need some more gold bars. So let's go ahead and cancel these to make a couple of gold bars. So I'm gonna need more money to do that as well. This is one of my 
larger complaints when you were trying to put down specific single tile like this it can be tricky to, to get it in the right spot like say right now i want to get this right here in the middle of this three by three using a mouse and keyboard it doesn't do a good job of accepting multiple inputs right away you can see if i press s and d it's going to go down then right and then down right see that so if you want to get something up here you kind of have to start in a different spot so i can press up and then right there we go and that is just a little annoying it's pretty tricky sometimes if you'll, you'll find yourself fighting with getting it in just the right spot uh, and i find it helps if you're trying to get it in a specific spot like if i wanted to get it right here but i was over here you just move around a bunch until you're on the right level and then you'll it, you'll manage to do it there's very minuscule customization with flipping it left or right changing the orientation of the building yeah I have an outhouse here I should probably clean out. Make some food for my people. There are mini games for fishing and food. Each of these have a little chance of causing a bonus or a negative. Right now I'm just making up stuff that's negative, but that's fine. You can kill your cultists, you can marry them, you can do all sorts of fun little things with them. Over here is little buildings you can make for them to go ahead and manually gather materials. They do break down after a while, as you see there, that one was destroyed, and you'll have to rebuild it if you want to get more materials. You do get more taken out than you put in. There's a couple of other areas here that I've unlocked so far. I'll show you one of these. These are some of the non-combat areas, and actually this guy wants 20 mushroom spores, and I only have 19, so that's a shame. But you can come over here and you can buy some additional tarot cards, which we'll get into when we get into gameplay. You can buy some decorations. There's a gambling mini game up here at the Lonely Shack that's kind of boring, I'm not going to get into. It's an easy way to get money. And this is another one of the locations. This is the fishing mini game. Pretty simple, Stardew Valley-esque. You just throw your rod out here, fish comes up, and you keep it in the green. It's pretty fast, and it's pretty easy. I haven't failed. I don't know what you happens if you fail it. That's about it for the cult stem part. Let's get into what I consider the meat of the game. And that is these doors here. You have to have a certain number of followers to unlock them at first. You can see here I need 12 to unlock this next one on the right. The premise is you were murdered by these eldritch beings and now you are being brought back by a fifth eldritch being that's telling you to kill all of the other ones. You start in the first room, you get to choose a weapon and a spell, or a curse as they call them in this game. Each weapon has a trio of attacks. For the gloves that I have here, they are vampiric ones, so I can take the life force from a foe. However, I am wearing a certain fleece that I have unlocked, which changes my red hearts into times one and a half amount of blue hearts, which is preferable for me. I'd rather just have more chances to get hit and then not have to worry about healing. Holding your spells, you right click and you hold and it fires. You can get materials from these things. That little red dot, that is the mana essentially for casting your spells. Uh, one of the key parts of combat that I have found is if you attack, dodge, attack, you can attack immediately and it repeats the attack that you just did. So with these gloves, for example, every third attack, doesn't say it here, but every third attack does more damage than the first two. So if you go one, two, three, and then you just keep dodging, you can just keep spamming that third attack. That said, one of the things I have found trouble with with the dodge is that there's been multiple times where I have tried to dodge, and right there, I just tried to dodge, and it did not take me the full dodge. It cuts off. And I am not sure why that happens. I'm assuming it's something to do with the mouse and keyboard. There's also some problems with attacking in certain directions. If I'm moving left, but I have my mouse on the right, you can see there. It's inconsistent with where it is throwing its attacks. 
If you don't move the mouse and you're moving in that direction and clicking, it will attack there. If you are moving the mouse though, like if I'm going like this and I am moving in a direction, it will attack on that side. And that, that can cause problems. So what I typically do is I try to move my mouse in the direction that I want to be moving just to minimize that problem. And that's probably one of the bugs that happens with a keyboard and mouse that you won't experience with a gamepad. Again, I think that for the most part, they ask you to play with a gamepad to avoid seeing all of the bugs with the mouse, which is a fair mitigation, but I prefer that, you know, fix using a mouse and keyboard. In the top right corner, you can see that there's a whole bunch of rooms. Oops, took some damage. You can see there's a bunch of rooms uh, when we're not in combat. There's some floor hazards here. Right there. There's no way that I've found to make this bigger. Pressing M doesn't do anything, and pressing tab is what opens up the inventory menu. So I'd like to be I'd like a way to make that bigger. But very binding of Isaac map. Gameplay plays closer to enter the dungeon than binding of Isaac, I would say. These are the tarot cards I mentioned. You have a chance when you interact with these that they will be stronger than their default values. So over here I could gain half a heart, or uh, when I hit and when I am hit down to half a heart. Enemies will take damage. This is useless. I don't have any half hearts yet, so I'll take the extra half heart. Uh, once per run, you can also spend 20 gold, which I do not have, to buy a extra tarot card. And there is currently no way to travel back through the dungeon to revisit rooms or revisit other paths without manually running all the way there, which is annoying. Because that means that if I had missed that tarot card there, and I had gone up here and all the way to the exit, I would have to manually go down and run through all of these rooms to get back. And that's a little annoying. That's something that Enter the Gungeon solved by having little teleporters. And I think that's something that would benefit the game here. Just some more damage there. I do have a bad habit of just spamming attacks and not really paying attention to bullets. There aren't too many enemies so far that actually shoot bullets. Usually it's restricted to a couple of stationary ones and bosses. I have started to notice that some enemies are getting an extra ability that has a tick wheel that once it fills up they will either drop like a poison puddle or they will shoot bullets out. And this is heavily inspired by Slay the Spire. You have little path choices here, and you can tell what they are. Over here, you can see there's a shop, and there's a follow underneath it. So this would be a place where I could buy a follower. There's combat rooms. There's food, rock, log, resources that you can get. Let's go ahead and let's go get a follower. In these rooms you typically have to clear out, and then you will get to rescue somebody and go recruit them into your cult. Now, I am playing on the hardest difficulty. The other difficulties I played on briefly and they just seem very easy compared to what I think a basic difficulty should be. And you saw there it was very quick but I was able to reflect an arrow with an attack. So you can deal with ranged attacks by just shooting them back at enemies. Ooh, explosion. Let's take out this guy. And that's it. We have this cute little maned bull looking thing. Join me. Empower my Laminus. There are these mini bosses that you can encounter. That was weird, he just did his introductory again. This is one that I have fought before, so I can know his pattern pretty well. That doesn't mean I'm going to succeed. <laughs> and I just dodged into that. I can get pretty greedy with my attacks. And he's gonna do his charge. He's gonna do his bullet sponge. Something I'm noticing here is he's not dropping any of the mana that you need for spells. Normally when you attack someone, they drop those out, especially bosses. It's every attack drops some, so that was a little weird. 
And so you get a chest full of a lot of stuff. You get a little piece of a talisman that's used to add rules to your encampment. Hopefully I'll be able to get a couple of those and I can show you that later. Steal devotion from these guys. Each of these maps with the doors that you go into, you have to complete four times to find the boss. And then after that, there's a what appears to be an endless run version of it. Ooh, yes, blue heart, I'll take that. I'm just going to run through and trigger all of these environment things so they don't come back to bite me later while I'm fighting. And you can see that this third combo attack spam really works with the gloves. Not all of the weapons it matters that much, but with the gloves specifically because they do more damage on that third attack, it makes a big difference. Hopefully we'll be able to show you the upgrade system. This is one of my biggest, I'd say, problems with the dungeon gameplay. It gets very repetitive very fast. For the most of it, you're going to use one or two different weapons per run, and you're going to have one or two different spells that you end up using. And the runs have lasted anywhere from four to ten minutes. So here you can see there's some different spells you can pick up here. Shoot multiple projectiles, two seconds of invincibility. We're shooting three projectiles at once. Uh, let's go ahead with the invincibility. And so you can try it out, pick it up the one that you just lost, or you can recycle it for a single gold coin. Rock's gonna come down. And one nice thing is skeletons do drop bones and the, when the chest opens at the end of a room they automatically break and you just have to walk close to them to pick them up. You can get tarot cards from the chests. Uh, one thing, you don't have the option to not accept it once you pick it up. This hasn't really been a problem, but I don't know if I can show you in here. There are a couple tarot cards that I would rather not pick up. Um, I can't offhand remember what any of them do, but I know there have been a couple where I'm like, I think that this would impact how I play the game with my playstyle, and I don't want to do that. Generally, they're not. They're, there's not any that are inherently bad. There's just some that change how I would approach gameplay and that usually makes me play worse so it's more of a, men a mental thing than a actual problem with the game a me thing if you would all right we're going into the boss room next steal the devotion ow Kill this frog. Yeah, this is pretty much it. You're seeing I'm doing the same thing in every room. There's not a lot of difference. That's de definitely the, the weakest part of the game. Oh, this frog has one of the symbols I was talking about that adds a different thing to it. When I kill this, it's going to drop a bomb. So those have started appearing up more and more. Ooh, let's go ahead and get a sword. Let's show you a different weapon. So this does the same amount of damage for each swing. The swings are a lot faster. You can still do the attack dash attack for a bit of a faster attack. But it's typically worth it to do it. Attack, dash, attack, attack, dash, attack, rather than just doing the uh, constant dashing and attacking that I was doing with the gloves. Whew. I would say that this... The sword you typically can play a bit more smarter with your dodges. You don't have to be as aggressive. You can be more climbing, thoughtful. Let's kill this thing before it shoots. Nope. Oh, thank goodness for invulnerability. Alright, and here's the boss. So before you go in here, you can choose to return to your cult instead if you've gotten a lot of materials. If you lose or on a run, you will drop 50% of the stuff that you have picked up and claimed. This is my second time trying to fight him, so this is one of the four Eldritch bosses. Heck it. 
And I've lost to him once. Woo! He shoots bombs, he jumps, and he attacks you with his tongue, and he spawns a bunch of enemies constantly on the side here. You can see there's the tongue move. You can see he is dropping all of this red stuff that I was talking about. So this gives you more spell mana, which is nice, especially when I can just go invulnerable for two seconds and just keep wailing on him. Woo! That was a lot of damage. He's gonna thunk. There, my favorite spell that I've found so far is probably this one that gave you. Nah, I have to fight these little mini bosses here. Uh, but it was probably one that gave you a slow effect on enemies, and it worked on the boss when I got it that run, and that was nice because it's, it really slows them down in everything that they do. Oh, that's a lot of tongue. That's too much tongue, but not enough tongue to do anything. Oh. All right. We've got a Heart of a Heretic. This is my second one of these. These give you a little permanent buff to your gameplay, which I'll show you when we get back to the cult. So we're breaking the chain that is sealing our deity. Big old chest. With... Uh, this is also a little annoying. Every time you pick up a decoration, it takes you in here and shows you where it's unlocked on the menu. It doesn't really add anything to the experience. It just kind of takes more time. Like, I don't really need to know where it is in here. It already has the this little mark that doesn't go away until I re-enter that menu. Alright, let's go talk to our deity. Kind of like a cat so far from what i've gathered all of the deities have been kind of based after creatures of some sort you saw that heck it was a frog oh cultists aren't happy someone's someone's revolting Where are you? You're starving. Oh, oh, these guys are back. Ah, there he is. Oh, it's a lot of meat. You. How dare you revolt? You can imprison people and start to re-educate them to make sure that they know that your ways are the only ways. And we can recruit this follower. So when you go in here, you can adjust their names. I typically name my guys after as he's terrified of death, loses face when the follower dies, materialistic. I am a simple man. Keep me. I make the names so I know who I need to sacrifice and who I need to keep around. And here you can see you can choose to customize their form if you want. You can choose the color. Let's go ahead and make him have a yellow nose. And you can choose their variants, which there's usually three and it just changes their face. You can get rid of his beard here, you can give him some tattoos, and then you accept him. And you assign him to do a task. Go ahead and take you as well. Nice, it's a lot of meat, which is good because people are starving. Gotta make him some more food. The can I make him a good meat dish? Some pumpkin dishes. Hearty meal broth, there we go. Go ahead and make these. And this goes pretty fast. You can see I'm making nine meals and it's going to take me like ten seconds. There we go. So they'll come down and eat. Let's give them a chance to finish that. You can see this guy is waving at me and he has an exclamation point. He wants to give us a quest. He wants some mushrooms. We can accept that. He wants 10 mushrooms, so we would have to go into the space and gather 10 mushrooms, and that would complete the quest, which increases his loyalty to the cult, which helps him level up. When they level up, they give you more faith and upgrade points. 
over here we can show you the sermons now as well as the crown upgrades so once i think it's uh once a day you can give sermons and this is how you upgrade your combat so this is where the cult sim ties in really well with the actual dungeon crawling this is where you get upgraded weapons upgraded curses let's go ahead and upgrade to merciless weapons they have a chance to deal critical hit when attacking enemies. Nice. And for each level they are, they give you one point. So level threes give you three points, level ones give you one point. And then you can upgrade your crown. Let's see, I have two things I can do here. Uh, so these are the fleeces that you unlock. I got these by completing quests for side NPCs. There's a nice little variety of them. And then there's the crowns. The first one I unlocked was Darkness Within, where I receive a diseased heart at the beginning of each run, so that basically gives me more HP. The other ones here are when you're killed, you can be resurrected by sacrificing a follower. Uh, once a day, you can eat a meal to receive a temporary heart, or while on a crusade run, you can instantly return to the base. I'm going to take this, because I think with the endless runs, if you don't do this, it gets real difficult. You can get down to half a heart in a room, and then you're still three rooms away from going back. Being able to return at any point would be nice. Then there are also the primary upgrades here. You can see here I've completed the afterlife and the work and worship and the law and order, and I still have some left for these two, which are sustenance and possessions. And these essentially give you a choice between two options to permanently adjust how your cult functions. So let's see here on the left, alms for the poor, form a ritual at your temple in which you distribute money to all of your followers to increase their loyalty and gain faith, or perform a ritual which all followers donate money to me. Ah, I like to give to my followers and keep them happy. We can give them money. And that breaks this tablet. Yeah, cool. You can see here from doing that, they all upgrade. Let's go ahead and you know let's let's do this. I'm a generous soul. You can see some of the animations are a little wonky. All right, I think we're good. And they donated some of that money back. We'll take that. And then let's go ahead and talk to some of these guys who are going to level up. You see that bar filled up. They level up. They give you a, another piece of a slab. Uh, there was a cat here that was ready, right? Yeah. And that also gives you devotion. Over here on this left, this chest, you can sell items too. So this is a good way to get coins. There are some things that sell for more, and usually after you sell the first thing, it drops down a coin. I haven't seen it drop below that price though, so you can sell a bunch of these and you can get money pretty easily. Go ahead and clean out this poop. You can fertilize your plants as they're growing. You can see there's a bush here, and that just gives you some more of that type of item. Let's go ahead and generate some more money. Let's also go ahead and get some more gold bars. Can we make that building yet? That Yes, that level 2 refinery. So you can upgrade your existing buildings and then manually build them yourselves or your followers will build them. If you do build them with your followers, that helps increase your faith because you're doing something with them. I see it looks like I have actually quite a few people who have leveled up. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Yeah, that's essentially the gist of the game. You're going through to kill Eldritch Gods to free your god. The dungeons themselves are pretty straightforward and not, oh, not too engaging outside of the core gameplay. There's not a lot of RNG that changes how the dungeons run between each one. It's pretty straightforward. Cult of the Lamb is available for $24.99 currently on Steam and most modern consoles. Should you buy it? Yeah, uh, for 25 bucks, I think that it has enough content that it's an enjoyable colony simulator slash dungeon crawler. It doesn't do either of those things particularly extraordinarily different than other games have. It's just kind of a mash of all of the current kings of the genres, and it's fun. 
the art style is beautiful the soundtrack is great i don't think that it's going to stand out on its own two legs for the replayability value levels that things like hades or slay the spire has but it's still an enjoyable game that i'm going to complete and finish there are incentives because you only choose one of two options when you upgrade your crown that will make at least two different cults play pretty differently. So I think there's there's some minor replayability. The actual cult building aspect is where you're going to be spending 70% of your time. And that's fun. I enjoy colony simulators and there's all enough to balance and it ties in well enough with the actual dungeon runs with that being how you upgrade that it's satisfying thank you for watching i've been the loose critic if you enjoyed this video you can show your support by hitting the like or subscribe buttons below and if you didn't you can hit that dislike button trust me my feeling will be hurt i'll see you next time <laughs>